My name is Coral, and I'm here today to talk to you about life in the deep sea. And the first thing you might be asking yourselves today is, what is this on my head? What do you think it is? What does it look like? You might have seen something like this before. It is a type of fish that lives in the deep ocean. You guessed it, it's an angler fish. So today we're going to be talking about fish just like the anglerfish and its friends that live in the deep ocean, its adaptations, the conditions that it goes through every day, and what it needs to survive. You might have noticed on the top, this fish has a light producing organ. You might have seen this in movies like Finding Nemo. This light producing organ is called an esca. And the anglerfish uses this a lot like a lure, the way a fisherman does, to wave this about in the water and attract smaller fish so it can eat. Now, how do fish like the anglerfish produce this light? We're gonna learn a new word today. It's a big word, it's bioluminescence. So sometimes when we learn a big new word, the best thing to do is to break it up into two smaller bites. Let's look at the first part, bio. Bio means life or living. Luminescence means lights. Bioluminescence means living lights. And many different kinds of animals in the deep sea use bioluminescence for their everyday lives. What are animals like the anglerfish and other bioluminescent animals trying to do when they flash their lights? They're trying to communicate. They're talking to one another. Imagine you're in the very deepest parts of the ocean. Close your eyes as tight as you can. Imagine that darkness at the bottom of the ocean. You never see the sunlight. The only other light that you see are flashes of lights from animals of your own species, from other animals that you might want to eat, or even worse, animals that might want to eat you. So bioluminescence is a form of communication. So in order to show you how fish like the anglerfish and the lanternfish communicate by light, let's play a little game. You can play along at home with a small flashlight. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a set of instructions only using my flashlight and you're gonna play along at home. First of all, the rules. If I flash the light one time, you're gonna jump up and down. If I flash the light two times, you're gonna spin around. And if I flash the light three times, you're gonna dance in place. Are you ready? Let's go. Great job. Excellent. Awesome. We all did a great job communicating with light just like bioluminescent organisms do in the deep ocean. Now you might be wondering, how do scientists know so much about the deep sea? It's not exactly easy to get to the deepest parts of the ocean, but using technology like this, we're getting a better idea of what lives at the deepest parts of our ocean. I'm holding what's called an ROV. It stands for Remotely Operated Vehicle. And essentially what this is, is a little submarine or submersible. Um, think of an RC car. So the way this ROV works is that somebody is standing up on dry land with this controller um, and they are piloting this ROV up and down in the water. It has little propellers or thrusters. In this particular one, which was built by one of our ROV camp students, it has pool noodles for flotation and inside of it, it has lead shot to help weigh it down. Um, the ROV is meant to be neutrally buoyant in the water, which means it should neither sink nor float. Um, and when we want it to move in the water, we provide propulsion to each one of the thrusters to move it up, down, forwards, or backwards. So what else could you do with an ROV to make it even more helpful for ocean exploration? You could put a camera on top of it to record a journey down to the bottom of the ocean. You could put different kinds of measuring equipment on it. You could put a thermometer. You could put a device that measures pressure. Um, you could even put devices on there used to collect samples of organisms uh, or plankton that are found in the ocean. So there's a lot of different things you can do with ROV technology. Um, these ROVs are not difficult to build. As you can tell, this was built out of material that you could buy at your local department store. Uh, you can find instructions online. And with a little bit of knowledge in electronics, programming, you yourself could build one of these. 